All right, it's time for my reviews. So if you skipped the update video, I'm just gonna give you a quick little rundown of some channel things that I mentioned. Um, there were two videos that became public that weren't really meant to be public. They're okay to be public, but they were for my Patreon supporters. So if you saw those, don't worry. Um, there's That was just a mistake on my part. It's Like I said, it's okay for them to be public, but I didn't want you guys to feel like that you had like the, to be pressured to like support that anyway. I just accidentally made videos public that were supposed to be unlisted. These things happen. <laughs> on another note, um, I do sometimes include um, links whenever I'm talking about the books that I've reviewed, and um, those are affiliate links. And it does say that in the description below, you know, that they are affiliate links, but just letting you know that now in case you didn't know that. And um, I've mostly been sticking with Amazon links, but I've, I'm actually going to be including other alternative links with those as well, um, kind of moving forward. So just wanted to throw that out there in case there needed to be any clarification on that. So let's get into my reviews. I read five books in the month of March. I did, I did a lot in the month of March. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first book that I completed in the month of March was The Oracle of Ghosts. This is book seven in the Ghost Writers series. I really enjoyed this series. Um, it gave it an overall star rating of five. Um, that's based on the Goodreads rating. Um, the actual rating is 4.75. So let's get into my review. This book is the follow-up to the short Carol of Ghosts and is a thorough examination of the new role the main male character Jackson will now play in this series and expanding universe moving forward. We discover that he is a guardian and what exactly that means. But before we get to making sense of everything, calamity ensues. At one point while reading this story, um, I thought the author had somehow portrayed, betrayed me and any other reader who'd grown to adore the Jackson character. I was ready to toss my e-reader across the room, and then I read the next line. Magic is a powerful thing, and this author is really good at writing about it and how it can be used for good or evil or something in between. Plus, um, there are deities all over the place. This book focuses a lot on building up the confidence of a character you didn't realize wasn't confident, but it's a clever way of showing how people are the same and different in diverse circumstances. It allows the reader to empathize in ways they may not have considered in the past. Plus, there were the usual wisecracks from time to time. I really enjoyed this installment and look forward to more. The main reason this isn't a true five-star reading for me is because of the amount of time it took to present the actual purpose of Jackson's new role. I felt like it was being kept secret for longer than necessary, but ultimately it didn't take away from anything else happening in the story. Um, the scene with Jackson's ghost, trying not to give a spoiler here, really touched me. Highly recommend it for fans of horror, complex paranormal situations, diverse characters, and smart dark fiction. All right. And if you hear some whining in the background, that's my doggie. She's trying to give her two cents. <laughs> All right. The next thing that I completed was the first of the two IWSG book club reads for the month of March. This is the Psycho Hose Beast from Outer Space. This is Gale Harbor One. This is a middle grade kind of science fiction horror and I gave it an overall star rating of five. All right, let's look at the review. <laughs> this was an IWSG book club read for the month of March 22. Um, and I am glad that it was selected. I really enjoyed this book and have already pre-ordered the next in the series. In our discussion, we talked about the genre of the book. And while I got a definite coming of age vibe, horror and dark science fiction also stood out. I love these kinds of stories for kids who want to read something dark without it being inappropriate. I think the next book may have a more YA feel to it, but I'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited to see where this band of kids ends up. Considering they don't, they don't all start out as friends, the possibilities are limitless. I love the fact that these kids bond over a tragic event in their lives without it feeling forced. 
Um, they don't have to be friends to survive, but I think it definitely helps. I adore the humor in this book. Outside of a few fork jokes, but this is a kid's book, <laughs> it was very nostalgic. Even for kids now, I think they get a kick out of the kinds of things kids were doing and saying back in the 90s. Um, with, with the story taking place in Canada, there was no disconnect for me as a U.S. reader. Outside of the humor, nostalgia, and frights within the story, it also touches on very serious life lessons. I like the way the author is very casual about these topics without diminishing them in any way. Dealing with the loss of a family member, a deadbeat parent, substance abuse, physical abuse, and more are mentioned in some way, and each time it is a life lesson that these kids take in stride. Highly recommend it to fans of middle grade science fiction horror, those with 90s nostalgia, and anyone with a good sense of humor. Yes, I was pleasantly surprised with this book. All right, now on to the second IWSG book club read for the month of March. This is Turn the Light On. This is a short um, story. It is a romantic comedy. I gave it an overall star rating of three and let's get into my review. This is a story that stuck with me well after reading it. I think I spent more time thinking about it, thinking about what I read than actually reading it. It is a short story that packs quite the punch. As an I.W. Ashley book club read for the month of March 22, I enjoyed the opportunity to read something outside of my preferred genre and be entertained by it. The main reason I'm not rating this book higher is more of a reflection of me as a reader than the talent of this author or the content of the story. I know for a fact that others from my book club adored the, sto adored the story. <laughs> for me, it was a bit of a challenge, and thus I caution those who see this review to take all points into consideration. Because I seen this author's work online on her blog, I was somewhat familiar with these characters. However, I never knew their origin until reading this book. I guess I was expecting something different. The concept is intriguing, but the delivery had me questioning how much of it I was willing to believe. The secretive nature of this couple's introduction never sat well with me, but for readers who enjoy reading about limited or secret encounters, it may suit them just fine. By the end of this book, it was clear the path the female character was going to choose, but it bothered me that there weren't more negotiations about the terms of the relationship. From the book, the book club discussion, I determined that I feel the story was an unconventional twist on a very traditional romance trope the good girl and the bad boy. In this case, the good girl isn't a young virginal woman of European descent, but a mature black woman with life experience. The bad boy is more of a classic anti-hero type. He is a dangerous mature man who does bad things because he has to. He's not a true bad boy. For me, this was my favorite part. I liked seeing traditional tropes get a fresh spin that moved them beyond the average. As one of as one of the comments in the discussion stated, tropes exist for a reason. People like what they like, and I like this. My other issue with the story was the leading man, Alessio. To me, he seemed very possessive, but again, that could just be me. Whether or not someone likes possessive people in real life, they can enjoy a possessive character in a story, but it's something that I struggled with. Overall, recommended to romance fans and someone wanting a quick out of the norm read. Yeah, it was very nice. Plus, like I said, this um, author has written about these characters like on her blog. So if you read this story and you like it, you should definitely follow her blog and see some of the other kind of encounters that she's written about these characters. All right, the next thing that I read. I'm not going to read the whole title here because it's a really long title. I'm just going to read the main part of it that you can search. <laughs> it is Light the Dark. Um, this is a collection of essays from writers on their, on their creativity and inspiration. I gave it an overall star rating of four. And let's get into the review. Aside from the eye-catching cover and the detailed title, I was apprehensive about reading this book, but I'm glad I accepted the challenge I gave myself. As part of the Read with Faye challenge to read something each month to help with my writing craft, I was excited when I came across this title. 
My fear was that I wouldn't be able to relate to some of what these notable writers had to say, and I expected a lot of it to come off as pretentious since it focuses a lot on literary fiction. Honestly, while some parts did seem a little pretentious, most of it was very relatable. Turns out I can be a bit prejudiced. As I continue to grow as a person, I am happy to admit that I got a lot out of this book and am inspired to continue growing as a writer. I think what stood out most to me in this book, um, hold on. <laughs> These are my words I'm reading people. I think I may have to go back and edit this. So it says, I think what stood out most to me in this book about writers and their inspiration is how much it focuses on the experience of the reader. All of these writers are readers and use that as a way to inspire them. I was so impressed by the diversity of these creatives and the variety of the works that inspired them. Yes, there are a lot of references to literary fiction, but nonfiction, genre fiction, poetry, stage plays, and music also have a place here. I enjoyed reading about the writers who I found I had some things in common with, and even like discovering contrary interests that some of that some had to my taste. Highly recommended to writers at any level of their journey and creatives of any kind who enjoy reading. So yeah, this is one of those reads that I, I wanted to read it, but I was apprehensive about it, but it ended up being a good thing in the long run. And I have to sometimes let go of my prejudice and just try things. So, and I may have to go back and fix some typos. <laughs> All right, so the last thing that I read this month, I, was, I wasn't sure if I would read this book, but I was kind of like on a roll and I really wanted to read it. So when I realized that I still had another week left in the month, I was like, let's do this. So the last book that I read in the month of March was Mitten with Strudel. This is a sweet romantic comedy, part of a travel romantic series by Ellen Jacobson. And she's one of my favorite um, kind of... <clears throat> humorous authors. She writes romantic comedy. She writes cozy mysteries with humor. So anyway, I ended up giving this an overall star rating of five. So let's get into my review. And this one is short. <laughs> this was another quick and fun read in this series, perfect for a lazy day. I like that this book didn't go back to explain how the series started, but was very clever and seamless in pulling in previous installments of the series by mentioning people and places. As usual, the last start straight out the gate. So many memorable lines are now stuck in my head. I like that this book feels separate from the others while still being connected. This takes the travel theme to the next level by introducing international espionage. I am all, <laughs> I'm all for whatever comes next. Note, I've listed this book on my diverse characters list, but that's only because all of the people and places that are, and that's only because of all of the people and places that are mentioned. The diversity of the characters is mostly limited to European citizens, but there are a few outliers as well. Highly recommended to fans of romantic comedy and spy stories. So um, I just wanted to mention that because I do keep like a list of books that I feel like have good diverse characters. And even though the majority of these characters are European citizens, it, it's, a, it's a variety, you know, there's English people, there's German people, there's French people, you know, so there's all these, you know, these different um, cultures within the European um, citizens, but then there are a few um, outliers as well. Um, I think they have someone from the Middle East and anyway, regardless, I'm rambling. That is what I read in the month of March. Those are my book reviews. I had a really good reading month and I'm already getting started with my April reads. Um, I will be going on vacation the last week in April. And so that's probably where I'll get the majority of my reading done, but I'm, I'm going ahead and getting started now. So let me know what you guys think. Did you like any of the books? Are you going to check them out? What have you guys been reading? Um, you know, that's how it goes. Until then, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll see you guys next time.